good morning and in this video we are going to discuss about uh, forms uh, which are uh, uh, an essential component of web pages uh, in, uh, in our browser uh, they are not uh, uh, a difficult component they are just uh, HTML elements uh, but uh, uh, since they are the most interactive part of the page uh, uh, we must maybe devote some time to learn some some tricks uh, and especially uh, to learn the new features of HTML5 forms because a lot of tutorials and other websites are designed with the, all the forms from HTML4 in mind and uh, uh, we already have a lot of new features that we can exploit uh, to simplify our work mm -hmm. so let's dig into this uh, uh, this new topic um, where we want uh, to understand uh, okay how to use the forms in web applications uh, learning the the most common controls in html5 and especially uh, deal with the dynamic part okay so how to validate the correctness of a form how to handle the events that the form will generate when the user is interacting with that so let's start from the simple uh, idea of uh, uh, handling forms and just remember uh, that uh, the, 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 the old web cycle of, an, of, a, of the old application uh, life cycle of a web application uh, uh, was uh, uh, already included uh, forms uh, but was uh, mainly um, based on the loading of new pages so in a, in a form you traditionally you would uh, input data into some control input boxes check boxes and so on and you submit the form at that point the browser will send out an HTTP request and with this request it will also send out a copy of the data you entered and this, uh, this data will be encoded in different formats and the call we HTTP call will use different uh, HTTP methods but we will discuss that uh, in, when we go into the um, studying the, the, um, the client server interaction more deeply uh, but the, the, the basic point from the browser point of view is that uh, the submission of a form will reload the new page a new html page hmm, that uh, uh, will destroy the current one and will be uh, will replace it so actually all the work of processing the form will run on the server side uh, of our application server and the form is being submitted there and a new page is being generated this is no longer happening today uh, because in what we call the modern uh, uh, web applications uh, we still have forms into the html pages but <clears throat> mainly these forms are managed by the browser the browser the javascript of course in the browser listen for the change events uh, uh, everything you do in the form and uh, reacts uh, appropriately directly due in the page so you will modify the paint content uh, according to what you are typing you it can validate uh, the content uh, directly on the browser uh, it may um, uh, talk to the server to get additional data for example when you are um, checking for an um, autocomplete list uh, the browser will need to check uh, uh, or to get this information from the server and so uh, a lot of interaction happens uh, directly inside the browser without uh, uh, creating new pages and uh, uh, it, in some cases uh, uh, it's all that happens in some other cases uh, also this, the form is really submitted uh, it may in rare cases very seldom they will will actually reload the page as in traditional application but in many cases the client will send the data to the server in an asynchronous way so the form is submitted anyway to the server but uh, the page is not lost so we are let's say taking all the control of the uh, of the form into our javascript code hmm? and only some uh, at some specific moment uh, some data is sent to the server so sending to the server is the last action that sometimes we do sometimes we don't and is not the normal action for form so this changes radically the way we design them a form uh, is made of uh, some controls some html elements uh, that compose basically uh, the, the the content and the instructions uh, how they behave and every form is included into an html tag called form hmm? you can guess it and the form basically has two attributes uh, one is the url action at which the uh, to where the form is expected to be submitted uh, you can imagine that if you are dealing with normal uh, with the javascript uh, forms uh, uh, we don't care about this action hmm, because we are not submitting it in, in any case 
uh, and the method, a submission method, which is maybe post or get, uh, and the same applies. So this applies only if we are really submitting the form, uh, like in order application. Submitting a form will destroy the page and reload a new page. If we don't want that, we are, actually we don't care about these two attributes. Of course, uh, uh, like every HTML element, uh, we uh, may also specify an ID on the form, and they suggest that we do that for every form because it makes them much much easier to refer to them in CSS and in JavaScript just to get the element. And the form is just a container. By itself, it doesn't do anything. It's in an invisible container. They may contain normal HTML or and form controls. So the actual interactive element. So this is just a delimiter. So, okay, all these form controls that lie in this area of the page are grouped together. So we can uh, reason uh, with them as a, as a a, a single set of data hmm? and the form controls are again HTML elements uh, that specify different uh, uh, types of user interaction possible into the page uh, basically we have input uh, elements we have selection elements we have buttons uh, and we have also other uh, auxiliary uh, say uh, elements like the labels for the different elements um, we just give a, a quick overview over the most important ones uh, so that we can focus more on the dynamic part uh, that we need to, to learn on, on, on the JavaScript side. Um, the most important control is input mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it has a set of attributes and different, uh, depending on the attributes uh, uh, it will uh, uh, have different uh, aspects and different uh, uh, behavior. Uh, this is the simplest one, an input of type text is used to get some text information. So it's just a, a simple text uh, a box in which the user can write something. Mm -hmm. uh, the basic attributes are the type that specifies uh, the, uh, the variant of the input that we want to use. And then we have a, a name value pair. So the input element has a name and a value. The name is an internal identifier of the element and value is whatever value the user wrote into that uh, uh, element so you, we can change the value in javascript or we can read the value just to, un to know uh, what the user wrote in that element um, well, we may also have a placeholder which is the the grayed out text uh, that is written into a, a empty input um, but just for uh, for uh, the ease of, uh, of navigation uh, the, um, the loading of the DOM in, uh, in the browser already simplifies us the access to, the, to these elements. So basically the document uh, object, which is the, the father of the DOM, has a forms property. Of course you can get to a form by uh, get uh, uh, element by ID by specifying this ID, of course. But uh, it's easier if you just use the forms property. The forms property is an array that contains all the forms in the page and these forms can be indexed by number form 0 1 2 3 if you know the order or by ID which is a suggested way so in this case document.forms indexed by ID which is a string it's a quick and direct way of getting a reference to the um, uh, DOM uh, object corresponding to the form element and then the form itself so it is my form contains uh, elements for example, the input elements, all of which uh, they have a name uh, and they may have an ID also. And so there's a, another property called elements that contains all the elements inside the form. And you can index them by ID or by name. So it's easy to get the form, document.forms ID of the form, dot elements ID or name of the element. So it's a very quick uh, way of uh, identifying a specific uh, element in the form. And the elements property is also useful because uh, it only considers form controls. So it ignores all the other HTML around. So it's very easy to get uh, to the uh, data container elements uh, by skipping everything else. Hmm? Okay, so this is just for, for ease of access. And uh, as I said, the input control is very versatile. It has very many different forms. Uh, you can see at this page, uh, uh, the type attributes as Maybe, maybe 20 or more different values. And depending on the value of the type attribute, uh, the, the input control will behave very differently. 
so the input will be just uh, an empty button or a checkbox uh, or the selection or color selection that we when clicked it will open a, a color selector window and uh, uh, or a date uh, or let, let's skip this one because it's not very well supported and an email address so is normally a text area where the validation checks uh, that you enter a valid syntax for an email or uploading a file or just a control which is hidden which can be useful to to store some data without showing that to the user uh, a submit button in the form of an image uh, specifying a, a number so a text area that is restricted to numbers uh, or a password or you see a radio button uh, a range selector um, a search text or a normal text there a telephone number a time an address and so on so many of them are the variation of the text element where they impose additional constraints for the syntax uh, some of them are variation of the buttons for example you have the reset button or the submit button which is the most important one that will submit the form when pressed if we want to submit it and what we see is that some of them are uh, tagged with an html5 label uh, meaning that they were introduced in the html5 where html5 introduced uh, the automatic validation client side validation of form elements uh, and uh, um, uh, allowed for custom forms elements uh, for example the color selector one or the calendar selector one and uh, that are already managed by the browser so you don't need to create anything very complex in javascript just for selecting a calendar date you just use a date instead of text in your form and the browser does everything else and uh, all these uh, text uh, uh, boxes that look similar they really behave differently because they apply different validation rules and so that's important why uh, that why it's important to select the right type for the input level element if, even if they look similarly uh, they behave differently and uh, uh, on all these input elements uh, we have some attributes that are commonly used so uh, for example uh, only on radio buttons or checkboxes uh, we have the at checked attributes the checked attribute it is uh, uh, used for uh, specifying which uh, checkbox is selected or not so it's called checked uh, not selected uh, and which uh, radio button is active over a group of the of radio buttons uh, and so in this case it would be uh, it's only one of them because radio buttons should be mutually exclusive we may have a disabled uh, attribute okay. all of these attributes can be um, written in the html code or can be read or written by the javascript code of course this is the general rule that every html attribute is also accessible through the dom mm -hmm. so you can think them uh, uh, when you're designing your page or you can also think of them when you are programming uh, your callbacks uh, disable is for uh, disabling a control so the control will be still visible but the user will not be able to interact it's grayed out or read only can the value can be shown but uh, not modified uh, required uh, ensure the validation rule so the form cannot be submitted if this value is not is any value is not entered here the visual size the value inserted by the user and whether to turn on or off the autocomplete uh, feature of the of the browser so these are there are of course dozens of attributes these are probably the most commonly used ones and uh, there are other attributes that are specific to the specific control for example if we have a number uh, input uh, then we can specify the minimum and maximum value for the number if we have a text input we can uh, specify a validation pattern uh, attribute which is a regular expression and so on so uh, just study uh, the attribute that uh, the elementary uh, that you need uh, already has uh, so that um, you will discover that much work uh, is already done by the browser directly so you don't need to repeat uh, what the browser already does in terms of uh, uh, filtering the, the legal values that the users enter in their forms there's another tag which is not really a control but this uh, helps uh, building the, the form and making it uh, uh, more interactive, uh, easily to, easy to interact with. It's called label. 
the label uh, is a normal piece of HTML, maybe a text, maybe an image, usually it's a text, and uh, it relates to a given element. For example, a, a checkbox is very hard to click, okay, because you have to, you, 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 you understand when you're using a smartphone, sometimes it's hard to check really the, 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 the checkbox itself, because it's very small, okay. So the label is used uh, for uh, saying that this this text uh, is actually a label for this checkbox and this text is actually a label for that checkbox so if the user clicks or touches in a touch device the label is the same as if it clicks uh, on the on the radio button so you can click here and this, uh, the, um, the checkbox will be selected immediately hmm, at the same time uh, how it works uh, of course you must label the checkbox or any other element with an id and uh, define a label the label be a, like a span actually it uh, it uh, marks a, a piece of text uh, with the four attribute and the four will match the id of the element uh, of the target element basically mm -hmm. so uh, we suggest that in a form we always have the, some piece of text uh, besides uh, input elements besides uh, also text uh, dates and uh, other time of, uh, of controls uh, we always have this text and it's very, very a very good practice to label the the, the text we use, to use label to mark up this text uh, and associate that with a real control mm -hmm. it will also help uh, other kind of accessibility of the html and we will discuss uh, the accessibility by by person with disabilities uh, um, and uh, we'll, uh, we see that they have additional benefits marking the labels in this way have additional benefits for accessibility um, of course uh, uh, all the all the attributes uh, in the in the html elements uh, are also uh, converted into javascript properties mm -hmm. uh, for example value mm, on text inputs uh, uh, if you read it if you read the value element of the dom con corresponding to an input uh, it will give you the text written by the user if you um, if you set the value you are actually dynamically changing what uh, uh, is shown to the user in the form and so a check that can be read or written to know what the user selected or to force some selection on the form and so on and this is an, a nice attribute validity uh, that tells us uh, whether the current uh, uh, content of the form of uh, in general or of a specific element is valid or not mm -hmm. so we can dynamically check it and also uh, manipulate it with the uh, with css as we show uh, in a moment there are other controls for example text area or select uh, a text area is a text field uh, spanning the several lines uh, uh, we see very different shapes that the or forms or visual forms that this uh, text area has uh, according to the uh, whether it's uh, just not selected or selected or it's disabled and different browsers uh, have different visual clues so we don't have uh, with form we don't have the full control of the visual aspects of the elements because many of these elements are rendered natively by the browser using in some cases also operating system widgets and uh, uh, so the, the the appearance of the form uh, is not e very easy to control mm -hmm. the behavior of course is, is predefined the value that we collect is the same but the visual appearance uh, is not easy to to customize also with the, in, not even with css uh, we can create drop down menus with a select uh, element uh, that contains ob option elements and in this case the terminology is a bit different because the elements are selected and not checked so we must be careful when we create drop down menus uh, as opposed to uh, radio buttons which are semantically equivalent uh, they use a totally different terminology so a radio button uses input and checked a uh, drop down menu uses select option and selected as, uh, as element and attributes so we just be um, familiar nothing complex and uh, just uh, um, be aware that you need to check uh, the, the real uh, the, the correct attributes uh, we also have a, a button uh, tag uh, which can be created by button or we can be created by input type uh, equal to button or submit uh, of course the button is more versatile yet there's more attributes it can also uh, include images into the into the button itself instead of uh, 
of the input button input type equal to button which uh, is only a textual button uh, but in any case we always have the, these three main types of buttons uh, submitting the form resetting it to the initial state or just a button that by itself does nothing but uh, we can attach javascript callbacks to make it do whatever we want and this uh, i dare to say is the more uh, useful uh, the more popular uh, type of button that we will use uh, uh, during these front-end development applications as we said the button class can also specify a text uh, or specify an image in this case it's an svg but maybe any kind of, uh, of image uh, to uh, to contain to be contained into the into the button itself so we can uh, style it more easily than just native buttons and as we mentioned before the the, the visual appearance of input controls uh, uh, is not fixed and every browser changes uh, the appearance of that uh, in a in a different way these are quite uh, and uh, it's not something that is uh, disappearing okay these pictures are from last year's version of the different of the main browsers uh, uh, firefox chrome and and, uh, and and safari and, and you see that a, a very simple item like a text field uh, is shown in different ways and uh, you, we we can do something to change the color styling but also the size is different and so on uh, so uh, it's um, we can use css to to try to make a uniform appearance uh, but uh, uh, it's not uh, not everything can be done let's say uh, there are some elements that are easy to control uh, some that are very difficult to show for example you know from the lab that uh, giving a a, sh a color shadow to a checkbox is, is extremely hard and uh, and so some some uh, say uh, styling may be done easily some is much more difficult uh, if you are interested you can check this page uh, for some suggestions uh, but in many cases uh, if you want uh, uh, some nice uh, and uniform uh, interactive elements uh, uh, you should rely on some library for example bootstrap uh, provides you to a with a consistent set of, of input elements they do a lot of work behind the scenes to make them work and uh, uh, and we should try to rely on them if we want to do that by ourselves uh, let's be prepared to fight uh, with or against css uh, and with or against the different browsers that will uh, have different behaviors hmm? So it's not uh, it's not an easy task. Unfortunately, the form uh, visual as aspect uh, has not been standardized very much. But that's just visual, okay? What we are more interested in is the data, hmm? is the values uh, that we get with the forms. And for example, all the uh, capabilities that come with the, with form validation that is new in HTML5 and is very powerful. Uh, form validation uh, is a procedure that is uh, executed every time uh, we uh, enter some data or modify some data into a form so whenever we do something uh, the browser checks uh, whether we enter it conforms to a set of rules hmm? and the constraints uh, that we set um, in general uh, whenever we enter some data there sh we should have uh, always two levels of validations one on the client side on the client side we may have two barriers one is html itself so the browser will not uh, admit uh, for example an empty field or will not accept uh, uh, some letters into a number input and so on so something is already validated by the browser and something will be validated by our own javascript code so at the end when we have a set of data that will be valid according to the rule that we set in the, in the HTML elements and to the rule that we set in the JavaScript callbacks. And at that point, we know that it's valid. Then we send the data to the server, and the server uh, also gets this data and usually does an additional level of validation. Okay? Uh, normally, we do both sides. Uh, we do validation in the client side for usability for having an immediate feedback and then we redo the same validation on the server side we need to redo the validation on the server side because we cannot trust data coming from the browser you know it's very easy with the inspector to change javascript on the fly and so it's very easy from the browser to submit data which is not validated because you just need 
just bypass the JavaScript or uh, modify it. And so the server will never trust, the, oh, but this data has already been validated by the JavaScript. No, you cannot trust that because you, are not, you have no control of what happens to your JavaScript in the wild. Hmm? So usually we have server-side validation. We'll discuss it when, the, well, of course, when, the, when we discuss the server-side. Uh, right now, we just focus on the client-side validation. And client side validation, uh, a first level is already built in into the uh, HTML input elements. So for example, in the email or URL, you can all enter values that are syntactically valid, uh, numbers and so on. By the way, the browser, if you are using an input number and you, have, you are in a mobile device, it will pull up a numeric keyboard on the screen instead of the full letter keyboard. So it's also be, it will also be easier to fill in uh, your um, your data not because the the right ki kind of keyboard will be selected if you specify what kind of uh, uh, of data you want uh, remember the re required attribute hmm, that uh, tells to the browser that a specific field cannot be left empty and so if it's left empty the, the form will not be submittable it will not be blocked in any way and after that, if these kind of validations are not enough for you, of course, you can uh, plug in into uh, your uh, JavaScript validation. Built-in forms uh, also rely on these other attributes like minimum, maximum, maximum length, minimum length, uh, uh, and uh, regular expression patterns uh, that we skipped uh, before. And we can also use uh, CSS uh, uh, to highlight uh, in a different way the, for the elements that are valid or the ones that are not valid. Uh, there are two pseudo classes called valid and invalid that you can uh, uh, dynamically intercept in CSS. For example, um, in this case, we have a CSS that will uh, draw a dashed red border around an invalid element, uh, input element, and a black border around a valid element. So dynamically, when the user types, uh, the invalid pseudo uh, uh, or invalid pseudo uh, attributes will change uh, in real time and so the style will also change in real time this is probably too, too much because uh, every time i type a letter this is going to change uh, and it's, it could be distracting so maybe we want to modify it only uh, once the value uh, has been saved but uh, in any case it's uh, um, it's, uh, it's very easy you know, to intercept any uh, possible uh, change in the validity of, the, of a given uh, field uh, this is uh, what the browser already does so let's, let's try to use it let's try to exploit it and then on top of that we may add the, our own uh, javascript validation and uh, uh, we can do that uh, in, in at two levels again the first level is trying to plug into the native browser validation with an, uh, with a specific api uh, to uh, add some callbacks uh, into the validation process itself so we can modify the validation process of the browser or more in general and this works even if we are trying to do something else not just validation we can uh, register some event listeners uh, on some events that all the input controls and the form controls are uh, firing continuously when the user is interacting with them the constraint validation API is a set of methods uh, and properties that are uh, defined uh, on the uh, on all the con input controls. So these are the set of uh, uh, of elements that, that provide you with this functionality. And this functionality basically is uh, uh, included in these three properties and two methods. Um, these uh, these are the properties that are uh, accessible through the DOM onto uh, every input control uh, we have a validation message that contains a string describing the problem that is currently uh, afflicting the, that specific element so if the element is not valid you know why because it's a string that described it or you can also set your own custom validity message so if it's it's not valid for a reason that the browser doesn't, doesn't understand you can tell the browser, okay, this element is not valid for this reason, and, set, and uh, provide your own message. Uh, some elements will be validated and some not, and this property will tell you which ones. And you can force the validity, the validity check of the element. Hmm? Uh, 
Hmm? So you can check it, say it will, the browser will tell you, okay, this element right now is valid or right now is not valid. And uh, in particular, uh, there are invalid, invalid events that are generated uh, when, uh, when we are calling this function, where if the element is not currently valid. And also there's a, um, a validity uh, object, uh, which uh, has a lot of sub properties that will help us to, to distinguish uh, the reason why an element is not valid. So it may not be valid uh, because it, uh, it's too long, or so it's uh, it's um, it's violated the, the max long, max line property, or because the pattern is match, uh, or a time is match, and so on. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of uh, uh, sub properties. So you can check uh, whether an element dot validity. Uh, dot uh, pattern mismatch is true or false and will tell you the reason or the reasons why this element is not valid so you can really actually uh, check what the browser is doing understand what the browser is doing and also maybe change it so you can force an error when it, when the browser would not detect it and uh, the next step of course will be to uh, to uh, handle and manage uh, uh, some events that are coming out from the forms uh, and uh, these are the main events that, that are generated of course forms uh, can handle all the normal events like the click uh, and key down key up and so on that are valid for every html element but uh, there are some very specific ones uh, and in particular uh, we have an input event which is generated every time something changes in, a, in an element even a single character so it will fire very very uh, frequently or change that will fire when uh, the content of the element is changed usually for example in a text element uh, if you are writing abc then you are firing an input element at a one at a b and one a b c but a change element a uh, change event only when you go out of the of the of the form so while you're still inside the text area or the text input uh, uh, change doesn't fire when you move from that input to a different part of the page and if what is the current value of the text input is different from before then a change event is fired and so it depends on whether you are checking every letter or just uh, the the global value it can you can add an event listener to uh, one or the other or you can also also check when the uh, given element gains the focus or loses the focus with these two on focus and on blur events uh, if the user is copying copying pasting and so on you can also be notified and so do something on those actions um, please don't disable cut and pay, copy and paste because it's uh, really bad uh, to the user even if you're tempted to and uh, finally there's this invalid event that will fire when you try to submit the form so if you try so to submit the form by clicking on the submit button that maybe is called save or is called close or in other, in other case then the browser will check all the uh, input elements and uh, apply the validation rules on every element uh, if there's something which is not valid the browser will generate an invalid event on every element which has some problems so maybe you have five elements, two of them have problems, so you will get an invalid event from the second one and an invalid event for the, from the fourth one, plus an invalid event on the form element hmm, at the top level. So you can decide where you can put your own event handler. Maybe you can put an event handler in, the, in each element just to show an error message just besides that, and uh, an, an event handler at the form level just to maybe prevent it uh, uh, for being saved or something like that so this uh, is very uh, powerful because we can actually handle the validation process uh, and so we see for example that uh, uh, we have uh, an input event uh, if you try this uh, this code uh, that will log uh, the current value every time you write a letter here ta -ta -ta -ta, uh, or uh, on change you only uh, see this message once uh, when you submit or just when you when when you blur when you exit from this element or when you click somewhere else mm. um, okay but the, the mechanism is uh, is normally that of so at the at even listener that we already used with all the other elements so there's nothing special from the dom point of view it's just that these elements are more rich of new type of events always remember 
uh, if you don't want the form to submit to the server you must prevent default on the submit uh, uh, event so on the form uh, you should mo most likely we will always want to intercept and to redirect the submit event uh, and doing something else uh, instead of letting the browser do the default action that remember the default action is uh, destroying the current page sending the data to the server and loading a new page which in single page application is normally not what we want so we there's no way of uh, disabling the submit action into forms uh, you can maybe not put the submit button but then if the user clicks on enter on a text field then an implicit submit is, is triggered so you really need to, uh, at, the, at the form level at the form level to um, to redirect this uh, to let's say uh, inhibit uh, and prevent uh, the uh, the form submission if you want your javascript to stay in control of the page uh, okay so this information is very well explained into the mdm pages so if you want to learn more usually when designing just remember to go there and check uh, the the properties and especially the validation properties for all the input elements that you are using and uh, the, this concludes uh, the, this presentation about the forms uh, and uh, we, we hope uh, we can put that in practice in, in our labs.